What's up you guys, it's Matt here. So I needed to talk to you guys about a little bit of exit strategy information. The reason why I need to talk to you about exit strategies is because I need to let people know what they should be doing at, at certain times, you know, um, and what's gonna make the squeeze a better situation for some people versus others. So I wanted to break this down and give you an understanding of what's going to happen when we do see it end up mooning when it gets to that peak, um, and then what you probably should do and um, what you should do beforehand, um, you know, before we get to that, that spot. So this should be a short video. Just wanted to get this out there so that people do understand that when we make these moves, um, you can kind of protect yourself, especially when something like this happens to where it goes from 70 all the way down to 30, right? You can protect yourself a little bit. Um, even though you do believe in the position, you still protect yourself. It creates um, you know, that kind of instinct um, when you get into another situation where you're holding a position you start to protect yourself more cases than not. So anyways, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Also check out some of my links in the description. I have a lot of stuff and check out all my other channels. So let's talk about exit strategies, right? Because a lot of people I hear are like, I'm selling at 100K, you know, that's where my my um, you know ceiling is and that's where I'm gonna sell. There's no, there's nothing below it. I'm not gonna, you know, pull out any shares at any time. Um, I'm just ready to sell at a certain point, right? Um, let me tell you how that will mess up so many things for so many people. And the only person that will gain something out of it is you, but then again, you might not. Um, so when you end up increasing a stock, right? There's a winner and there's a loser, right? You get all the way up to there. You're both, let's say you and a friend are holding 100,000 shares, right? There's 200,000 shares available. You and a friend are holding 100,000 shares. Now it gets all the way up to the peak point and you decide to sell first. You sell everything. You sell 100,000 shares that you had. Well, once you sell that, that's gonna decrease that stock a hell of a lot faster than what you think it's gonna decrease. I mean, to a point to where it's gonna gap down, open up, at way lower numbers, and then you're gonna be like, well, what in the world happened? Well, you made your money, but uh, your friend did not make any money. Actually, they lost money from where they invested, right? Now, you're in the same situation to where you both invested $100,000, and you know this person over here ended up selling, and now you don't make any money. Now, how are you gonna feel about that? Because whoever, you know, kind of, you know, presses the trigger or presses that mouse button or has hotkeys first is going to get out of that position first and they're gonna decrease the stock with it. Just because you're up at a peak point and you think you're gonna stay at that peak point, no. It's gonna be a point where um, if somebody sells a large amount of shares, it's going to be pulled out and then the price is gonna decrease quite a bit. So understand that people can get derailed. Now what's the best situation, right? It's slowly moving up to um, whatever the price is, 100,000 a share, 10,000, whatever it is. And you both have 100,000 shares. Now imagine if um, you, know, you start pulling out a little bit, right? You pull out uh, just a slight bit, right? It probably derails the peak point of where it can get to, but you both end up making a decent amount of money, right? Even if you get to the top point and one person pulls out 50,000, another person pulls out 50,000, it's still gonna be to a point to where somebody ends up getting less out of the deal, way less out of the deal, probably losing money um, as well with a large amount of shares that's going through, right? So, like I said, just imagine that you're, you know, it's trickling up, it's starting to, um, you know, increase and it's going up by, you know, $10 and $20 and $30, right? And as it goes up to these higher highs, you're pulling out your initial investment, things that you're comfortable with, whatever this, um, whatever that, and then, um, what you're seeing is maybe both of you are taking some out, right? It does derail the peak point. Maybe it's not gonna get to $100,000, but maybe $80,000, right? Now, you're both able to come out profitable. No, you won't have millions of dollars that are in your account. You won't have like tens of millions, but maybe you'll have three million. Are you comfortable with three million? Possibly. But if you end up getting 10 million out of it and you know your friend ends up losing money out of it, well, that just doesn't end up breaking uh, the right way, right? Because then if, even if you say, okay, well, you know what, I'll sell, my friend can make, um, can lose money and I'll just give him some money. Well, now you're being taxed on the money that you gained plus the money that you're giving him. So it, it's, a, it's a difficult situation uh, for where, um, you know, you're not gonna be able to sell at some of these peak points like people think. Hopefully I, I you know, gave you some sort of an image. Um, but 
What we need to understand is we're looking at the time period where it did end up increasing from 17 all the way up to 77, right? Now, this movement here, as it starts to increase, you're gonna see some ebbs and flows in the market. It's never gonna be 100% green. So when you see that, you see those peak points, you can pull some out. You know, you pull some out, cover your initial investment, maybe put a little bit back in as it does go a little bit lower, and then, you know, end up increasing that stock a little bit more. Maybe somebody else will pull a little bit out in order to cover their initial investment. Then you'll see a, a trickle effect where you're only pulling out 20 shares or, or whatever. And if you do that, you're actually going to uh, extend the squeeze a lot longer because as the price is going up, while you're taking out 20 shares, somebody else is buying them. But if you do it on the price that's going down, so say if it gets all the way up here and you're like, all right, I'm selling at 77, let's pretend that's 700, that's 77,000, right? Um, if you sell at 77,000, now you have nobody that's looking to pick up your shares. You have, you're selling that position, nobody's looking to pick it up. So then what it's gonna do is it's gonna keep dropping keep dropping and keep dropping. Oh, and your friend, he's also selling. And other people, they're also selling. So that's decreasing the stock to where it's going from 77 down to 37. You can see exactly what happened here. Yes, this was a large amount of shorts that came in here, but you would imagine they did have sellers as well. So when you look at something like this to where, one, it's gonna happen over the after hours market to where you can't control it, where the peak is. Um, and two, when the peak point happens and everybody decides to sell at the top, it's gonna decrease that price by so much. You know what I mean? By the time your friend or anybody else is able to get out. And even by the time you sell all of your shares, you're gonna be like, you're gonna sell at this point and you're probably gonna end up selling or covering or getting out of all your shares somewhere around here. Some may cover at, or some may, um, you know, basically get sold at 77 and some may get sold at 73. Some might get sold at 78. It's not gonna all get sold at the same price if you have a, a large amount of shares, especially on the way down. Now on the way up, on the other hand, when you um, maybe uh, sell 20 shares, 100 shares, that's on the way up. They're getting covered because people are buying them. Nobody's buying on the way down. People are buying on the way up. So this is why I always say that um, you should find a way, find a happy medium to you know, maybe covering initial investments, getting something out that you're comfortable with, having a plan because if you don't have a plan and you literally just get to the peak point and don't even know what the peak point is, it's gonna be very tough for you. So I can definitely break this down um, in depth exactly, you know, not exactly what you should do because you should probably build your own plan, but kind of go through what my strategy is and what my mindset is as I go through different trades because I've been in a situation where I've seen it increase quite a bit and what do I do? I pull out little bits and pieces. Do I pull out all of it? No, because if it does come back on me, now I can take those little bits and pieces that I made a ton of money off of and put those in at the bottom, buy more shares because it has a capability of going up again. Do you know what I mean? So um, that's where I stand. I don't wanna make this video crazy long because if, if I end up you know, over explaining things, you end up um, not understanding. The only thing I will um, explain a little bit more is understanding the after hours market a little bit. If you get to the point to where the peak hits in the after hours market, know that it's gonna be very tough for you to be able to sell shares. Hedge funds, uh, institutions, any other uh, company that's getting in on the long side, they'll be, uh, it'll be very easy for them to uh, sell their positions because they're not doing it through certain platforms. But for you, it's gonna be very difficult. So when it gets to these peak points, know that it's gonna be uh, difficult for you and know that you might end up losing a lot of those gains by the time it opens. From a point to where uh, this may open at 50, and um, this, you know, you seem to hit its peak point at 70. And it's gonna be a lot more, uh, a lot more of a drastic change when it comes to the overall squeeze. So understand where you are, um, you know, what, the, what your profit target is, um, where you plan to sell at different points, and how much you plan to sell at different points. Because you don't need to sit here and think about, okay, well, I have, um, you know, 10,000 shares. If it gets to $10,000, then I make a boatload of money. What is that, 100, 100 million dollars? right? Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. It gets to a hundred million dollars. And you know, I think it might even be more than that. I don't know. I'm, I'm horrible with math right now, but it gets to a crazy number. You don't need that. You know, you, you want that, but you don't need that. Can you live off of, you know, $10 million? Absolutely. Do you have $10 million now? Probably not. So 
What I'm saying is that don't get greedy because greed can kill you. Greed can kill your account. I've had so many different times to where greed, um, you know, for me, will will kill my situation. Just look at GME. You know, I wanted to, in the beginning, I wanted to quickly just day trade that because it was towards, you know, I thought it was, you know, towards the, the end um, until it ended up seeing that large jump. I thought it was going to, you know, pull back. But I wanted to see a little jump right away because I did see that in the stock and I was going to gain, I wanted to gain um, $2,000. Well, I got greedy because I was at $1,900 and I knew I was going to take that money and probably put it in at the lowest point that it possibly was in order to see that skyrocket, right? Um, well, I got greedy. It was at $1,900 and came all the way back to where I was down uh, $2,500. Um, so... That was an issue that I had. I knew I was greedy and I could have made that move to put more into GME, but I did it. See, that's where greed can actually kill you. So anyways, uh, I made this video longer than what I wanted to, but let me know if you have any questions. Hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell for more videos like this one. Also check out um, a lot of the links in the description. There's a lot of them. You can get, you know, free stocks. You can, um, you know, uh, get credit cards and end up. Uh, getting max rewards basically anyways there's a lot of stuff down there so um, check all that out I'm gonna get out of here and I will catch you guys in the next video